Welcome everybody to Monday Night War and we are live from Rochester, New York on Coming Up Next. Mr. Stone Cold Steve Austin, your general manager, will be coming out here to address the WWE Universe. Here comes the Texas Rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And yeah, he's coming out to address on his actions on why he did what he did and why he laid the, no pun intended, smack down on the rock and what his raw team beat up the SmackDown general manager. I mean, we have never really got an answer for what Mr. Austin did to the rock. I mean, hopefully you will find out the reason why he did what he did, but you know, I always thought these two had a good friendship going. I always thought they had a good relationship going. And uh, Austin, you gonna sort of understand where Austin's coming from after, you know, Elias basically brutalized one of his top stars and Seth Rollins and uh, yeah, basically just invading the show, trying to make a SmackDown look like the A show. So you can understand why that, but I'm going to stop talking and let's find out what Mr. Austin has got to say to us. Oh, this is not good for Mr. Stone Cold Steve Austin. The big dog has arrived here on Monday Night War. And this is not a good situation right now for Stone Cold to be in. I mean, this man is a ruthless killer in the ring now. This man is not afraid to basically, basically box your head in. He's not afraid to drop the Superman punch into your skull. and. Uh, the big dog is making his way down to the ring here right now. We probably will see Stone Cold have to defend himself against the big dog, but that should be fine. I mean, Stone Cold is a, you know, he's a, he's a Texan. He's, he, he loves a fight and he's ready. He's prepared for a fight here tonight and he's ready. He's calling for Roman Reigns. Come down, come down, get in the ring. And now, Roman Reigns staring Stone Cold Steve Austin down. Stone Cold telling him to get into the ring here and wait. Oh my god, that's Teddy Long. That's Teddy Long. The SmackDown Temple GM. Oh my god. A low blow by Teddy Long. Oh my god. You've got to be kidding me. This is all a setup. And now, Roman Reigns is backed himself into the corner looking for the spear on Stone Cold Steve Austin and he hits it. Oh my god. Jesus. This was a planned attack from SmackDown and they just returned the favor. They just returned the pay slip to Stone Cold Steve Austin giving him what he deserves and they actually just saw Taylor Long just spat on the shirt of Stone Cold Steve Austin. My goodness. I did not expect SmackDown to retaliate like that but Jesus. Wow, what a, a good plan from SmackDown I guess. We have an eight women elimination tag match where Team War for the women absolutely annihilate the White Squad plus Lazy Evans and building up their momentum heading into Survivor Series this Sunday. We have Andrade beating Baron Corbin with the Hammerlock DDT. Weighing in at 250 pounds, one half of the The Fight Pro. 
Here come the Vice Cards. Randy Orton and uh, yeah, Randy Orton managed to win that United States Championship of MVP a couple of weeks ago and MVP put a hell of a good showing, but Austin just wasn't smart enough, wasn't quick enough on his feet. Like Randy Orton is using his fashion instinct and beat around a lot longer than Randy, you know, than MVP was in this business. I mean, he's been brought up to you know, legendary, you know, his characters like his father, Bob Orton. And he's, you know, he's carried his weight here in the story. He's now, you know, obviously a 14 time world champion, and that's something that you've got to, uh, you've got to appreciate, Daniel. You really do that. I mean, you better appreciate why he's here, because once he's gone, you're never going to get a wrestler like Randy Orton again in your lifetime. Not to the high caliber that Randy Orton is. I mean, this man has never, you know, really suffered any major injury, and it's a cult to, you know, the way he lives his lifestyle. So you've got to appreciate Randy Orton while he is here. And here comes Keith Lee. He's limitless and he's leading the Limitless Legion into battle tonight against Randy Orton. And best make this dress up right now. This is not the United States title. This is just a one-on-one -on -one match. This is a match that Randy Orton needs to win to build momentum to head of his match against John Cena this Sunday at Survivor Series. Now that, my friend, that match is going to be very entertaining to watch and I can't really see how these two go back to war with each other one last time. Ryan Lawson versus John Cena and these two have had legendary careers and I can't wait to see how it will end. But right now, T3 is want to get a win over Ryan Lawson and maybe spend his pain for the United States Championship. And here we go, and there goes the bell, and this comes down the way. Randy Orton looking for a clothesline with Keith Lee caught him and takes him down, swooping him off his feet. Now Keith Lee waiting for Randy Orton to get to his feet, but Potomac goes with him now. One, no, Randy Orton kicks out a one. Staying alive, quite fresh in the match already. Oh, a nice strike there from Randy Orton. Picking him up for the swinging net breaker on Keith Lee. Randy's got, got a look to take down the big man, looking to weaken the big man right now. And now Randy Orton looks with an uppercut, but it just doesn't even phase Keith Lee. And he's still fighting back. And Keith Lee picking up Randy Orton and dropping him one on top of the ropes. And now picking up Randy Orton here. Now what's his plan here? Let's pick him up first. A belly toss, but no! A nice takedown from Randy Orton. And what? What? The no! No, John Cena's here! Oh my god! John Cena is here! And it, Randy Orton tell him to go away, tell him to get out of here! Cena's just walking down to the ring as we speak and... Oh no, oh no, 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 no! Keith Lee, take advantage! One, two, three! And Keith Lee, with a shock upset, beating Randy Orton with a little help from John Cena! Like, what? did we just see? What did we just see? I can't believe it. Strong being distracted around here long enough for Keith Lee to pick up the victory. Here we see, look at it again. One, two, three. And Keith Lee picking up the victory. Now, this is obviously a great feeling for Keith Lee to pick up the victory over the United States and it might put any potential for the United States title. But John Cena is, is congratulating Keith Lee but wow, but we'll see you all after the break when we head to our main event. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, there's Alan Cole. We just came back from after the break and Alan Cole is targeting Angel Garza and just chucking him into a wall. What the hell have we just witnessed in here? And now Alan Cole targeting Angel Garza and 
this looks like another, another attack here from SmackDown and slamming him right into the men's locker room here on Monday Night Raw. And Adam Cole leading the line for SmackDown with a super kick into the face of Angel Garza. And now, what's he looking for? And a jumping netbreaker taking down Angel Garza now. And now Adam Cole picking him up. And now he's going to just slam him right into the chairs. Oh my god. And now Adam Cole has got the trash can here. What is he planning to do with it? Oh, and just slam the trash can right on top of Angel Garza's head. And now, uh oh, Alan Cole has got a chair and no, hit him just below the knee, but no, now he's laying it on the chest of Angel Garza and now the head just looking to destroy Angel Garza right now. Smackdown looking to brutalize the war locker room headed into Survivor Series. And oh my god, Alan Cole driving his knee right into the head of Angel Garza and now Angel Garza can't seem to fight back I mean Alan Cole just taken some brutalization of Alan Cole in the war locker room and now what's Alan Cole think I'm doing here oh and just slams him into the TV and now what's Alan Cole looking for here again Angel Garza trying to shake it off but no Alan Cole once again Looking to throw it again into the TV. And now, oh, and just chucks Angel Garza's head right against the TV. And Alan Cole, oh my god, and the spear from Alan Cole. Spearing Angel Garza right into the TV. Jesus Christ. And now, there's there's AJ Styles. And now, a nice clothesline on Buddy Murphy. Smackdown. Are looking to destroy everyone backstage. And uh, Adam Cole. Yeah. I mean, sorry, AJ Styles, sorry. And now just power bombing Buddy Murphy. Smackdown. I didn't think they would retaliate by di like this, but they certainly have. Again, payback on war for what they did a couple of weeks ago to them on their show. And oh my god, and slamming the trash can one top of Buddy Murphy's head there by AJ Styles. And now AJ laid in some chairs up onto Buddy Murphy. Oh my god. And <laughs> this is just destruction right now. I mean, SmackDown, I didn't expect. I thought Roman Reigns the only person that came from SmackDown with Tay Long, but no. You see, the entire ah. WhatsApp came, and oh my god, a DDT to Buddy Murphy. Oh, AJ Styles gonna chuck him. Over to the corner, picking him up and slamming him down right on top of his neck. And now AJ Styles picking up Buddy Murphy, picking him on his shoulders and dropping him down right on top of his knee. Now AJ picking up Buddy Murphy now, picking him up, looking for the Styles clash on Buddy Murphy. Right on top of that, that ramp there, hitting him, hitting him head first right onto the floor. And there's Daniel Bryan looking for a one and elbow into the, to the face of Sheamus. And what the hell is this Ooh. for SmackDown? I didn't expect them to retaliate like this. And now SmackDown just laying waste to everybody in their path. Looking to just weaken the roster. I mean, they got no leader. Stone Cold Steve Austin has been taken to a local medical center just to check if he's all white. And now we're going to have more... You know, attacks here for SmackDown and destroy everybody in their path. SmackDown, I didn't expect this aggression from them. And now Daniel Bryan has got Sheamus. We obviously know about how deep of a rivalry these two have had over the past few years. And it makes sense why Daniel Bryan would target Sheamus. And oh, he's just chucked him one on top of the limo. And now Daniel Bryan got smash his head right into the, into the front of the, the limo now. And now what's Daniel Bryan? gonna do now he's got Seamus what's what is Daniel Bryan thinking of doing here he's taking Seamus over where's he taking him he's taking over to that car and oh he's gonna slam him right into the window and now Daniel Bryan opens the car door oh no 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 oh my god I'm slamming this car door white on Seamus's head and now Daniel Bryan what do you think of here 
Oh, nice, gets a stomp on the chest of Seamus, right into the concrete, looking just to drive his chest. And Seamus is trying to capture his breath, trying to get a bit of air into his lungs, not to stomp, having the stomping right into the chest area. And now Daniel Bryan has got a chair here. Oh, it doesn't look good for Seamus. Oh, no, into the gut. And now a DDT from Daniel Bryan on top of the chair. Daniel Bryan being up Seamus now. Oh! And now he's looking to lay in the kicks on Seamus, looking to beat the chest of the Irish warrior. And now looking for another kick to the face. And now Daniel Bryan picking up Seamus once again. Now what's Daniel Bryan got? What's he thinking of doing here now? I mean, come on, Daniel. I mean, I didn't expect this type of behavior from you, especially from all people. And now slamming James's head right into the car. I mean, sorry, into the lip, the front of the limo. And now Dan was again chugging him into the front of the limo. And now Daniel Bryan. Uh oh, this doesn't look good for Seamus chucking him on top of the car. Oh no, 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 no. This doesn't look good for Seamus. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh my god. God, Seamus getting smashed right on top of his bag onto the limo. And now there's Robert Roode. And now look at the target ties of Neil now. Just trying to talk tight. I was just trying to get a bit of chicken from catering. And now it looks like Robert Roode looking to work on their neck or times of Neil. Looking to just brutalize the, the man that has a, a national, you know, worldwide brand. And... Robert Roode not taking two gives gives a he doesn't even give a fuck about Tyson Hill's brand. He's just looking to destroy anybody that's not SmackDown and oh my god, chucking him into the vending machine. And the king showing why he really is a, a leader for SmackDown, picking him up and a swing at Netbreaker on Tyson O'Neill. And now Robert Roode has got a trash can here. This doesn't look good for Tyson Neil and oh my god! The trash can getting smashed on the back of Tyson Neil. Now Robert Wood picking up that uh, whatever the hell that thing is, a shelf? I don't know what you call it. And now this doesn't look good for Tyson Neil and oh my god! He gets planted head first right on top of that shelf. Robert Wood just laying it in on Tyson Neil. Looking to destroy. The title as well. Why? Brad and a spine buster from Robert Wood. Now he's looking to pick up Titus O'Neill here. Kick him into the gut. Looking for the glorious DDT on Titus O'Neill. And now Robert Wood preparing himself. Showing why he really is glorious. And Titus O'Neill. And there's, there's Shinsuke Nakamura and Richard Strong is just talking to Triple H here. In the GM office, and oh, I'm planting him down. I mean, temp Triple H is taking temporary child of war, and since Austin has to go to the hospital, but I didn't expect Shinsuke to just attack you know anybody in the roster. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're you know you're on the top stars of war or you're on lower down the card. You know, it seems it seems like SmackDown don't care as long as they just destroy war. That's all that matters to them. And now, what Shinsuke Nakamura thinking of doing to Riddick Moss? Uh oh, it's not gonna look good for Riddick Moss. And oh, and a German suplex through the table. And now just stomping on the back. And now a massive fist into the face of Riddick Moss and a beautiful suplex. With really much landing right on top of the floor. And now Triple H is watching on, not looking to get involved right now. He doesn't want to get attacked for SmackDown. You can understand why. And oh, just getting smashed right onto the table. And now Shinsuke Nakamura has got Riddle Moss once again and takes him to the table. Uh oh, this doesn't look good. For Wedek Martin, oh my god, this is just going to be a brutal attack from SmackDown. We have Team War for the tag team pick up a victory over the Officer of Pain and the Street Puffets. We have Nikki Cross pick up the victory over Becky Lynch after Shayna Baszler 
took her out without the referee looking and just pretty much choked her out with Nikki of course just picking up the victory on a lifeless Becky Lynch. We have Finn Balor picking up a victory over Braun Strowman after Gallows and Anderson helping pick up a victory by just distracting the big man to hit him with a low blow and then hitting the coup de grace for the victory. And here comes Seth Rollins, your captain for, captain for Team War this Sunday at Survivor Series. And uh, yeah, we got six man tag team action here tonight when three members of Team War will be in action when they take on the Lucha House Party. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see this match. I mean, honestly, we all know the talent of the Lucha House Party, we all know they're very talented individuals. but. Think about who you've got for this Team War Six Man Tag Team Action. You've got Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, and Lars Sullivan. That, I mean, if that was a faction nowadays, that would win you titles. But no, they're just the five tier team for well, now, maybe. Who knows? And here comes the Scottish psychopath, Drew McIntyre. He looks focused, looks ready, and he is angry after what Team Smackdown just did. After what the Smackdown roster did. I mean, just brutal out in the war, locker room, the general manager, and send a, a direct message to Team War saying you better bring your best guns, you better bring everything you've got because Team Smackdown is ready. And lastly, we found out that the war locker room chased him out of the building, they chased out Team Smackdown and also the Smackdown locker room. But the damage has already been done by Smackdown. Now, Team Maka has got to avenge the fallen members of Team War and the war locker room. And here comes the freak, Lars Sullivan. And this man has been an absolute monster. This man has been on a war path, defeating anybody in his wake, left, right, and center for the past couple of months. With Vince McMahon by his side saying he loves this bloke, and uh, I probably don't know to, you know, what he did to me at SummerSlam. But hey ho, I mean, you can't understand why he'd be on this team. Um, I mean, I just hope he doesn't attack me at Survivor Series. But, uh, yeah, I hope, uh, you know, Team War do avenge, you know, you know, the attack on SmackDown and Survivor Series. I really do. I really i am rooting for them now. But, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say whose side I'm going to be on because, obviously, I am a non-biased commentator. I support both brands equally. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if I had to put my money on who I think could be walking out with a victory, as a virus is, 
I probably put my money on Warm. I genuinely would put my money on Warm. I mean, they've got such a talented team. And uh, yeah, let's just see if we can get the job done here tonight and get the Luca House Party. And here comes the Lucha House Party, and uh, yeah, you know, Lucha House Party has so many other, um, well, let's just say they, they've done some things, I guess you could say, on on what, I mean, haven't we had any opportunities, and every time they have been in action, they've always, uh, well, uh, hmm, lost, but uh, that doesn't mean anything, I mean, a loss is a loss, it's always you know, work on it, you can always gain from something like it, but honestly they're looking to pick up their victory here tonight on Team War, maybe they're looking to disrupt the, uh, the war path of Team War heading into the Survivor Series. And here we go, and this match is underway with Kalisto and Seth Rollins starting for each respective team. You now Kalisto are looking to take control here, but now Seth Rollins seems to take control back. Now Kalisto taking control. And now Seth Rollins looking to be in a bit of danger now. Nice take down there from Kalisto. Seth Rollins now counters Kalisto. And now what Seth Rollins going to do? Locking Kalisto up in a hold. And now Kalisto reverses on Seth Rollins. And now Seth Rollins counters Kalisto. And this is just a back and forward match between these two to counter, counter after counter after counter. And now Kalisto went on the arm of Seth Rollins and quickly broke it back to his feet. And a nice suplex there from Seth Rollins into the cover. One, no, Kalisto kicking out. Still quite fresh in the match. Seth Rollins picking up Kalisto now. Now looking to Irish rip him into the corner. Now looking to make the tackle with partner, but Kalisto fights out the corner. And a nice clothesline there from Kalisto. Now makes a tag into Lindsay Dorado. And now Seth Rollins targets Lindsay Dorado, but Lindsay Dorado gets countered by Seth Rollins now. And now Seth Rollins picking up Lindsay Dorado. Oh, and a nice package driver there. One. No. Lindsay Dorado kicks out. And Seth Rollins seeming to try and try and take control back and try and try and take control for his team respectfully. And uh, let's let's talk about Team War, for example. I mean, Zeph Rollins, you know, the team captain. I mean, this is just it's quite a great uh, opportunity for him to put on his resume after everything he's achieved in his career. Obviously, he's a Grand Slam champion. You know, he's won the Money in the Bank three Ks, Royal Rumble winner. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, now he's got the the cap, the you know the honor of being a team captain for Survivor, and that is that's huge for anyone's career to be on. I mean, obviously, yes, it may not have been worth as much as a, a Royal Rumble win or a Money in the Bank Greek win, but it certainly definitely means a lot, obviously, to Seth Rollins. And, uh, you know, Seth Rollins, you know, pretty much has done it all in the WWE. And uh, you've got to appreciate everything he has done and everything he has committed to the industry. And, obviously, Seth Rollins has got a great team, you know, with him. He's got Lars Sullivan. Drew McIntyre and the mysterious fiend who may or may not be Bray Wyatt under the mask. We don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, I think it's called the fiend Bray Wyatt, but often Bray Wyatt says that's not him. So we don't know who's under that mask. And if it's not Bray Wyatt, then who is it actually? We do not know. But one thing for certain, it's definitely not Bray Wyatt. I mean, that's just a weird thing to say. Bray Wyatt not being a fiend, such a strange thing to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this war team is so talented. I mean, you got to appreciate the talent that is on this team. You've got Lars Sullivan, you've got the muscle of the group, you've got the powerhouse of the group, a man that's looking just to whip you in two if he gets his hands on you. You've got Drew McCarthy, the Scottish psychopath, a man that uses aggression to his advantage, and you've got Seth Rollins who, you know, has got 
the architect, he's got the king's own name, he's got the beast's own name, like he's he's got had a lot of names underneath his reign here in the WWE. But one thing you can't take away from him, he's a massive workhorse and you have to appreciate the amount of stuff he puts into his matches and into his uh, athletic western ability. And also the fiend is a a man we we're still quite mysterious about. We've only seen him once, which is at a, at um, at SummerSlam when he taped on Steam. And obviously we saw him a couple of weeks ago when he choked up the Rock. Um, but yeah, ever since he's been quite mysterious. We haven't seen him wrestle here on Monday Night Raw, like not at all. I mean, we've, we've made you know appearances here and there, but we've never seen him actually wrestle. But well, this is a uh, this. Thunder will find out if the Fiend can get on with a team. I mean, you never know what it's like on his own. Imagine what he can do with a, with a team that are all cohesive together. I mean, obviously Seth Rollins, Lars Sullivan, and Drew McIntyre have not uh, worked with the Fiend. Uh, they haven't really been uh, wrestling together, so to speak. But you know, it, I mean, maybe he's yeah, the nuclear option, maybe he's like their secret weapon, who knows? I mean, we don't know much about the thing, but what we do know is this man is a, uh, he can change people. And that's something that is a, uh, well, quite scary to, um, possibly to say, you got to admit. I mean, he changed Sting from the black and white face paint to surface Sting. And now we see him choke out the rock, which we don't know if the rock will pay after what the thing did to him. We do not know, I mean, all we know is that hospital, and he's, he, he went to Arsenal, he recovered, now he's iron resting up from his injuries. Um, but yeah, we don't know what the Fiend wants, we don't know why he's here, we don't know what he, you know, what is his purpose. But yeah, Bray Wyatt, you know, he's going to be able to have to face his fears, he's going to have to face off against the Fiend. And uh, well, that's going to be something uh, I'd be quite weird to see, seeing two men that each are called grey white face up against each other in the wind that's um yeah that, that, that's that's a weird prospect to say i can't admit but uh yeah seth rollins you know is now down here and let's talk about drew mactar i mean drew mactar you know he's a he's a former world heavyweight champion i mean obviously he had that uh long intensive rivalry with his slater and then eventually did him a whole um, but yeah, I mean, Drew McIntyre hasn't had the best of time. He's trying to be gaining the World Heavyweight Championship, and you know he could really use a victory right now. He could really use the victory, you know, over Team SmackDown this Sunday at Survivor Series. He could really use it. Um, but can he get the job done? I mean, I I believe you know if this was a one-on-one -on -one match, you know, I think yeah, why not? But currently, right now. With the team or team what I mean they're quite competitive right now they're, they're quite together but you know eventually in matches like these you know especially in the match egos will pop out at certain times and uh, you know who knows maybe Drew McIntyre would do whatever it takes to be the lone survivor and maybe eliminate maybe his own team members to try and pick up a WWE Championship match and hopefully try and get it back off you know the belt of Finn Balor now and trying to take back to the world as well you never know but uh yeah Seth Rollins now uh, just being the living hell out of Grand Master League right now in the ring and let's talk about Lars Sullivan now like Lars Sullivan is uh with a monster I mean ever since he's made his appearance here on, on Monday Night War especially with Finn man he's his career has been going up and up and up and you got to admire the hard work that Lars has put into his matches. And now Seth Rollins picking up Kalisto and slamming him down. And uh, yeah, last last I've been just been destroying it. Everybody left, right, and centre. Um, and yeah, I I mean I just it's kind of shocking to see how you know, he's now one of the biggest stars on War as we speak. I mean that's just quite a weird thing to. The same, perfectly. And now we've got the cover here. One, two. No, Kalisto kicks down that two. But yeah, a lot of them with Mitch McMahon is just the weird thing to say with you know, Mitch McMahon coming out with anybody. I mean, you don't really see Vince McMahon a lot, but when you do, you know, it's certainly something important or for somebody important. And just 
He values lots of his ability and loves lots of them. I mean, and these two together are like a, like a married couple. They love each other. I like the, I like those, um, they're like the freshmen in school. You know, when they first get together, everything is beautiful. But eventually, it ends up in tears. And, you know, I can see what happens. Wait, what? Oh, shut up, Finn. Shut up. You come on, like, we all know you love the last other them. I mean, your boy's now in the ring, so at least a few children. Seriously? No, come on, Finn. That's not fair. You gotta find me five thousand dollars for that. For that. For that little weapon. Are you joking me? Yes, I get it, Finn. It is your show. You WWE, I get that. But that's just not fair. You can't just buy me for something so you know, petty, something so minor. Fine, alright, fine, sorry, sorry. What? You want to stop being British? I can't stop being British. This is my voice, thing. I'm the voice of the show. I can't just change my voice to be American because. You know, you don't want the American audience to just turn off, easily. Well, what do you expect me to do? I don't know. Do you want me to put on like a, a cowboy accent like this? Like, I don't think so, then. Like, it, that would just take the audience away even more than it already has been in the past couple of months and years. Like, basically, the war view should be down because of your bad booking. Yes, it is, then. It is your company, but when your show is mediocre at best and it's falling apart right around you and you don't even realize why, it shows. It shows that you know you, you're out of touch. Wait, what, what are you gonna do, Fitz? Huh? What if you do finally? What what are you gonna do then? If you find me, who's gonna be the voice of the show? Exactly. You have nobody, and nobody wants to watch the show with no audience. Exactly, things, exactly. Fine, okay. Okay, I'll drop it, okay? I'll drop it. If you drop your fine, I'll drop mine, actually. Well, okay, how about this one? I'll play the fine, and we never speak about this again. Okay, okay, sorry, things, okay? I'm sorry, okay? Are you cool? Alright, cool. Alright, sorry, then. sorry. Sorry about ladies and gentlemen, that was Vincent Man. And then the chairman of the WWE, give me a good telling off with a slap on the wits. Um, but now in comes Drew McIntyre now coming into the wing and looking to turn the center to Drew the grand match league and responds with a, a massive headbutt. Oh, and now he takes Kalisa off the apron. And now he's gonna look at the punch Lince Eduardo of the apron, but no, Lince blocks it. Oh, and a beautiful help of Rana there from Lince Eduardo. And now Drew McIntyre being taken off his feet. Now let's like, what's this? <laughs> Lars Fulton chasing after Lince Eduardo, looking to pull him off the apron maybe. And now he's gonna pull him off. And now he's picking him up, looking to rock on the arm of Lince Eduardo, pushing him to the floor. And now you see Drew McIntyre trying to fight with Grand Max Elite looking for a super kick, but no, Drew McIntyre has got him and passing down the massive pile driver, spiking the net. And now Drew McIntyre looking for the Claymore kick, and he hits it on Grand Max Elite. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. And Team War for the men pick up the victory over the Lucha House Fighters. Makita picking up the victory for the team. And uh, yeah, what an excellent match we've just seen between the teams here. I mean, obviously, as we saw, Team War worked quite copiously, got the job done, and uh, well, what right now certainly got a bit of a you know, a bit of a situation in the hands now. They didn't realise that you know, the all together, um, they're all on the same page, and. They're now looking to turn their attention to Team SmackDown, looking to pick up a bit for you know, Team War as the Vibers and looking to play at the A show of uh, the WWE. But uh, yeah, everybody, that's all the time we have for ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all this week for the final episode of SmackDown before Survivor Series. Don't go anywhere. 
and we'll make sure you stay tuned. So goodbye, everybody. Wish we could turn back time to the good old days when the mama sang us to sleep, but now we're still stuck.